what we have learned with module four. So if you are um, a participant that gone through module four and you think it's interesting and you want to share one or two key takeaways from uh, module four, now is the time to do that. So please, um, if you have a very important thing you want to say, not really important thing, any takeaway at all that you may want to share with us for module four, you uh, please raise your hand and then we'll um, ask you to unmute and share. Is it okay? Are there participants raising their hands? Hello. Okay. Um, you man, wrap you man, right? Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Please, Please I have a question yes, that I wanted to ask. This is not question time. This is the time is to share key takeaways from module module four. So when it's time for questions and answers, I will so ask you to share. Okay, no problem. Let us just continue the program. When the time comes, then I will ask the question. All right, it's, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So yeah you are very, work, very welcome. Work. So, is there a participant that wants to share their key learnings from Module 4? Okay, Dr. Julius eventually raised this and please um, unmute and ask. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good afternoon, Dr. Julius. Yeah. Okay. Um, interestingly, from one to four, the whole model have been very captivating for me. But uh, you see, for Moodle 4, I'm thrilled by the level of information uh, that is shared through the Moodle 4 as it relates to uh, technology, uh, the advancement of uh, uh, the cold room system, and uh, the expectations. The thing is that I would like to see this technology advance fast into our own uh, country. Uh, right now, we're still having vehicles that are dependent on uh, the use of uh, gas. That's um, the, uh, is it MPK? They call it, sorry, um, the routine uh, uh, gas we use. And then we still have those using uh, the regular uh, uh, fuel. So, but with this level of knowledge, um, some participants like me would want to like, okay, where do we get contacts? How do we relate with this? Uh, let it not be something that is sounding like too far away, it's not near us, we can't reach it. So if he will uh, help to provide linkages that can help us source for those who would want to, uh, to make it a reality, it would be great. But the presentation was awesome. I really enjoyed Model 4. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for your feedback. That's really um, well noted. So uh, Mr. Nimikai is going to be here to share with us. And his company actually does all of those um, code ops and everything. So I'm very sure that we would have all of those answers. And then where we can quickly get any of these things, maybe the solar dryers or the solar coolers anywhere or oh, can easily get them. I'm sure Mr. Nika will be able to um, share um, more lights on that. So do we have other people raising their hands? Um, it's Dr. Julius. Okay, I think there's someone is up to, sorry, um, let me check. Abdul Kadir Iyanda Jimo. Please, um, I'm asking you to ask. All right, thank you very much, Ma, for this wonderful opportunity. Uh, actually, in Module 4, uh, this uh, cooling system is also interest to me. 
And I want to believe this system, if uh, we are able to adopt it in Africa, it will also contribute uh, to this issue of uh, uh, reducing the climate change, the climate footprint in Africa. And it also helps us to have most of our, our perishable foods. And this is also helping to develop. This is uh, take away from the model four. And may God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you for that um, contribution. So I'll just give um, the chance to one more person if there's any other person. Okay. Okay, so we have the first um, speaker as um, Nemekai Kwegonu. So Mr. Nemekai is the founder and CEO of Code Ops Limited and chair of the board of trustees at the Small Orders Foundation. He holds a master's in international development and cooperation from the Institute for Advanced Studies of the University of Pavia, Italy. We founded Small Orders Foundation. Um, the website is www.smallordersfoundation.org.ng in 2003 at the age of 21. The organization used its Small Orders Farmers Rural Radio Farm FM network to reach millions of small order farmers with daily agriculture, environment, environmental management, and market access, radio education, and messages in their local languages across Nigeria. In 2015, it launched CodeOps, which um, website is www.codeops.com, a socially conscious company that designs, installs, commissions, and maintains 100% solar powered work, working code rooms in outdoor food markets fresh produce collection centers and farms to enable small order farmers, retailers, and wholesalers to store and preserve fish, fresh fruits, vegetables, and other perishable food. Nemeka is Nigeria's most prominent young agriculturist. He is an Ashoka Fellow 2008, Laureate of the Rolex Awards for Enterprise 2010, Laureate Wise Awards 2010, Future Awards Nigeria Young Person of the Year 2011, Fast Company USA, 100 Most Creative in Business, 2012, Laureate of the Niigata International Food Prize, Japan, 2012 and 2013, Laureate of the prestigious Yara Prize for Green Revolution in Africa, now African Food Prize, and winner of the largest global food and environmental prize, the Food Planets Prize 2022, among other local and international recognitions. So, um. This is Mr. Nemeka Kwegun. We just read his profile to us. I'm very sure that um, those of us that have gone through the model were already familiar with his voice and all that. So, um, Mr. Nemeka, if you're on the call, I will want to um, leave the virtual stage to you. So, Mr. Nemeka, are you there? Okay. Well, so we don't get in for him. Um, Mr. Yemi, are you on the call? If you're called, I will just read out your um, profile and then you will go first. And when Mr. Nemeka comes back, he will continue. Well, so I just want to be sure that you are on the call. Mr. Dayum.
is that then if you're there, I would um want you to just say something so that I'm sure you're here. Otherwise, let's do other things, then our, our speakers can come later. Okay. Okay, so I'll just um go take the other things and then we'll have our speakers last. I'm, I'm sorry, um, everyone that we, we might be having our um, speakers speak um last today because they are not um on the current or maybe network or something, but I'm sure they will fix that and then will join afterwards. So let's quickly do the portal walkthrough. And for the portal walkthrough, I would um, want us to be as I would like to ask questions as to what our experience has been with the, the portal and if we have challenges using the portal. Someone said he asked questions before. Maybe this is time to really ask your question. Olachi Day Ahmed is raising his hand. Okay, please, I'm asking you to unmute and ask your question. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you very much. I, first of all, express my appreciation to the organizers of this uh, program. So I just have two observations. Can you hear me, please? Yes, please, I'm listening. Uh, my first observation concerning the, the module. I can emphatically tell you that I started, I mean, reading through the module maybe seven days ago. I thought, I just say, but can add that uh, it's not just read and go. Something that we were keeping as our daily, let me see it. I must go through it. So I'm now calling to the organizers that they should please, as much as possible, if you can have the copy and downloadable. A uh, soft copy of the of the all the lectures, all the modules. Please, if that wants to be, you know, if you can just assist us through that one, I'm just calling. It's not something that we can just read and go. And that is first my observation. Are you with me? I'm listening. Okay. Second observation is this. Uh, when I when I attempted my my quiz, and I still read, I went through. I now discovered that you are already programmed. That I can take it twice, but I take it once. In thing to take second, I discovered that I can you know I can access that again. Can you do so so that at least though after I past I you know I passed through the I bit cut off. When I want you to if we can just retake it so that we can also re be refreshing, refreshing uh you know uh brain if you can just assist us to that one as well. Those are my uh observations. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay all right thank you. So for the modules that's actually where we have the additional reading materials for copyright sake we're not able to um, release the videos in it said that were directly um, um, produced by um, some of the trainers that you already know or that you are even be seeing during the live interactive session. So we're not able to provide that. That's why we provided um, additional materials that could help. But then for as long as the portal is made available, you can, um, is open, which um, for the past four weeks, it's been opened and you can easily, and it's a safe paced thing. You can easily come back and look at it any time of your choice, but it's not going to be there for so long or forever because uh, we have yeah. other we have other participants and other batches. For example, a batch just finished for you, um, 
um, for this batch to continue to step in. And we cannot have two batches going through the course at the same time. It's not programmed that way and all of that. So we um want to I can Eluma. hear you. Uh, that's why I'm just begging the organizers that they should make available professor for that, please. Because that's as, why you said, also respond. Okay. as you said, you said okay. after four, three or two, four months, I mean four weeks of our of our of, of the I mean of our program, it means we can access the program, I mean, the the modules again. And the modules yes, is, is not just when I read through, it's not just let me go, let me read and pass, let me read and get a certificate. It should be with okay. us, if truly you want to make the business, if a person is truly to make the business, it's not just let me read and go. You must have it okay. every day, every day. And those are the time they may be sincere with you, they are so voluminous that you can, you can as you see it, you just, so tired when you are about to read the book. Those lectures, they are very concise and delivery. You can quickly read through and get what you want to have. So if okay. you can kindly assist us, it will be very okay and uh, welcoming. Kindly, yeah, the organizers should, should look through that, please. Uh, all right, that's uh, that's actually fine. Thank you so much. Uh, while we're looking at that, I'll still advise participants that, and this is the advice I've always given to other participants in, in time past, that when you can take all of the notes you need to take, jot all of the things you need to jot, for example, do screen record as much as you do, do anything that you need to do and all of that while it is on, because it's not going to stay there for a very long time. And um, this may be difficult, but it is... Uh, that's actually how it's programmed for now. Maybe in the nearest future world, we can have it open for everyone and all that. But because of copyright sake, we need to come and go and start taking permission for everyone um, um, person that's recorded all of those courses. And you know, there's so much from there and all that. So we, and we're going to have other batches coming after now. So once another batch comes, the other, the former batch cannot remain. And this is how, that's how the, um program is built. For example, once this batch graduates, they are being graduated into an alumni network. Not everyone will graduate though, but for as many that will graduate, they are being graduated into an alumni network and all of that, where they'll be able to share other things. But for now, the um, modules in itself, the videos in itself, the additional reading materials. The assessments you can take the assessment three times, three times you will be able to take it and all that. If, whether you pass or you pass, once you take it first, take it second times and the third time, you cannot take it again because it, we are using it to also up, um, upgrade our system and all of that. We need to know who is graduating. We also need to know who the top scholars are. So if we leave it that way, we may not be able to get all of those details that we need for the program in itself. So you can go through it for the first, second, and third time, or you cannot take it after the third time, the assessment in itself. That's what I'm saying. As that, but, so, hello, Uma. As that one yes, just I can done, hear you. As that one just done, because when I when I first attempted the, the quiz, though I scored above the, above the, the requirement, the, the cutoff. But I tried when I refresh the 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 dashboard, the, I discovered that it just takes me to next mode, next mode. So I take it. I couldn't take it. I took it for one time. I won't at it. Oh, that's not supposed to. We will look at that. It's supposed to. Be, it's supposed to be um, able to allow uh, you to take for three times. So, check so look at that, please. We'll yeah. check that. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. So the next person, please. Let's quickly make this um, um, question time really snappy, so we don't stay too long on it. So I'll ask. Who's this? Okay. So Bechuku Maika. Is that so? Which come back? I'm not seeing another name. 
Hidado Mohamed, sorry. Hidado Mohamed, please unmute and ask. Hello, good, good evening or good afternoon. Whichever way is fine, I can hear you. Good afternoon. Okay. <clears throat> this is a very great program. I really learn more. I really learn a lot from it. So I have an issue. So the issue is that I completed all the courses and mm -hmm. I spoke about the 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 cut off point, but I can not uh, see my certificate. Then I ask. So because joining this uh, live uh, program, I'm getting difficulty on it because of the network challenge. So even now, I the network is not that very clear to, for me. Some of the things I couldn't get what people are saying here. So this is, I think today is the day I have got gotten the program a little bit. I can hear people. So I don't know what will happen up with the last uh, program that was held live. I was not present. Okay. So is there any, what is the issue and how? Okay, so for the certificate, so for the certificate, it's, it's going to be made available at the end of the program. So it's only after the last live interactive session that it's um, certificate will be active for you to download from the portal. So you cannot download certificates now until the last live interactive session, which is week six. So we are in week four now, we have two more weeks to go. So at the end of week six, you'll be able to go to the portal and download the certificates only if you have taken all the courses and all the assessments in the portal. So for okay. the fact that you're not able to access the live sessions and all that because of network, we used to send um, the link to the live interactive session. We used to record it and send it. Um, later to everyone. So we send it both via email and to the WhatsApp group. So please um, go back to the link and you can watch them and assess all of the things that has been spoken in all of the ones of all the sessions that you missed. Thank you. Okay, thank, so, you. Um, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, we have got Dwayne Emmanuel. Please unmute and ask. Godwin Emmanuel is on mute. Okay, if Godwin Emmanuel is not there, I'll just move to the next person. Um, Sally Sue, who is on mute and ask your question. Uh, hello, good afternoon, ma. Yeah, I the session, but uh, last week I lost some due to the network issues. I not get some many part of the session, but uh, how can I, I uh, what all the things that are asking that would understand more the network issues? Sorry, it's you're breaking. Please, can you take the question again? I can hear you. Okay, I say last week, last week when I joined the webinar, but I, the network has, uh, how can I fix me out? I uh, do not get main, uh, all the, the session in the last week. But I know there was many things that you first me without knowing. Can you, can how the uh, record of the last week can go and cover it? Yes, we have sent a link to um, via email to everyone um, okay. for the last week's session. We have actually, please check your email address and I will send it. I will send it again after now. But then we have the recording available and we have sent that while we won't also send it to the WhatsApp group, we will also send it again. If you have not seen it yet, I will send it, I will send it after this session. It's Thank available. You. 
Okay, thank Carry you. Good travels, Miss Warwick. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Can, Can you hear me, you? please? Okay, yes, please. Yes, I want to ask, this is the first time I'm joining the program. Okay, and this is the mod, uh, model four, if I'm not mistaken. Is there any way, are you guys going to do another training so I can start from the beginning and flow through it now? I've missed the model one, two, three, and this is four. Okay, so if you get your um, email address, I'm sure that it's from every email because all of these things to be able to do it. Yes, yes, I got it from my record. We have sent recordings for the one, module two, and module three. So please, you can go ahead and just check out those modules and look at them. And then the portal is still open to assess the portal and all that. Um, there are going to be other training, but it's going to be for a new batch, not for the people that participate, um, that have participated in this. Um, batch. And that's why I'm in this space because I didn't start from the uh, beginning. It's almost done, almost gone. So I don't know if I can join the new one. So I can in a, a, a recorded version. Playing a recorded version is even from the, right. from the class. Yes, the class is actually the portal. So if the portal is available, you can just log in the portal. We have since the link you and um, use your email address to log into the portal, um, which is the main class and all that. This um, live session is just to interact what you have learned from the portal. So it's really not the main okay. class. The main class is the portal in itself. And that is really available for everyone that wants to um, go through it. At the same time, the way you guys sent the ebook for this and module four, can I also get the ebook for module one, two, and three? Ebook, what do you mean ebook? That is on the WhatsApp group. Those um manuals. Yes, that's not for module four. That's for all modules for module one oh. to four, both the links, okay. the videos, and the PDF. So we decided to download everything because we were having issues with downloading them and all that. So we decided to download all from module one to module six. Yeah, that's all okay. for the entire um, course, not just module four. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Godwin Emmanuel, if you're available now, please go ahead and speak. Otherwise, Dr. Julius, eventually you can go ahead. Hello. Hi. Okay. Um, yes, Mr. Godwin, please go ahead. Um, Dr. Julius, please hold on your work. Okay. Uh, thank you for this training. Actually, uh, it's very insightful, and I've uh, been benefiting from it a lot. Uh, it's just that uh, the previous one you passed me. This one you almost passed me again. I don't know if it's, uh, my face is uh, because my face is not showing. I don't know. <laughs> but all the same. Uh -huh. <laughs> so sorry about that. Sorry. Yeah. The questions I wanted to ask regards to the portal, you just mentioned it. Like uh, you just told me, and I didn't even know. I was even thinking they were different. The uh, downloaded uh, materials, which you just said are uh, in uh, the WhatsApp. So I'll just go to the WhatsApp and uh, pick them from there. But then secondly, uh, the question I want to ask now regards to the portal, but I don't know if I can go ahead. Should I? Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm a bit... Uh, I'm looking at the whole of the training. I'm trying to narrow it to directly to my own sector of agribusiness, which is... Uh, I'm into G classic food and kitchen. It's into an it's an H2 establishment that has also an online marketplace. So if I want to look at it, not on the farm, it's not directly an impact. We don't have a direct uh, link. So I don't know. It's a bit uh, confusing to me. But I know if we say indirectly, yes. But directly, no. So except if I go to the farm, though in the future we plan to downgrade by going to the farm. So we, uh, G class will have a farmland that they can 
plant crop and also use those crop for as a material production okay. to production. So can you clarify? It could be maybe it's just for me. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I don't know whether you're going through the potter. So in the potter, it's not just the farm. So the potter, we have um what the model that is um really concentrated on farming is the production, which is model two. Model two is where we have the adaptation and mitigation strategies in production, where we have all of the farming techniques, we have the, the greenhouse farming, the hydroponies, aeroponies, and all of the other things that um, has to do with farming and climate smart farming in agriculture. So apart from that, we have Model 3, which um, talked about processing and packaging. So for people that are into processing, that's what they do is to sell processed um, foods, agricultural foods, and all of that, package those foods and all that. So it's really not just farming. But then if I am in, I'm packaging um, maybe peanuts from granite, gran, um, peanuts is always made from granite and all that, and uh, or I am doing spices. Spices is not directly from the farm and all that. There are so much to do with packaging and all that. And then the processing and all of those things. There are the climate smart ways, which are some of the things that we talked about in module three. And then the module four, which is what we are on now, is um, logistics and distribution. So for logistics and distribution, it's really different. It's how you convey your, your items and the climate smart way, how you convey your food this thing how do you store your food in a way that is how do you plan your logistics probably traveling and all of those things traveling um and taking food products and all of that from one um position to the other and all those things and then module five is also even talking about um opportunities in climate smart agriculture opportunities where we have the climate financing we have the carbon market and all of those things this uh, that's actually what is embedded in module five and then module six is now the ecosystem now um, what are the laws what are the acts that are available for um, climate smart ecosystem the what is what is the law in your country that has to do even african as um, as, as a continent at large what are the the um, networking that we need to do, what ways do we need to come together, and then how does even gender act and impact climate and all those things. So those are the things that are in Module 6. So it's not farming, like, it's not just farming, um, Mr. Godwin. I don't know what that explain, but you may have to, maybe you, you have not gone through the modules, right? I, and it's fine if you have not gone through the modules. So many of you have not gone through the modules, but you can log into the portal. Like I explained earlier, the portal is the main class. This is just for us to come to and um, um, for people that have gone through the modules to ask questions about what they have learned from the portal and then to have conversations with facilitators and then get to understand the uh, modules better. That's what the live session is for, not really um, the main class. The main class is the one you are um, doing at um, your a self paced level from the portal. So, um, Dr. Julius, eventually, you can go ahead. Okay, thanks again for giving me a second chance. Um, my question this time around has to do with the fact that um, beyond the level of this level of participation, there sh will be another level according to the program design where those who successfully pass through are certificated and beyond being certificated, they are also uh, engaged in exchange program. Now, all of these are quite interesting and you had stated that uh, uh, the criteria for emerging at each of these level is uh, basically your scoring and participation at uh, the uh, forum like this one. Now, my concern is this. Um, you've had so many people who tell you that uh, due to network problem, they're not able to participate. And um, it is very, very obvious. Like uh, the last week, I logged on, but I never got connected because of the location where I was. I had taken a travel from my location and gone elsewhere. Now, so if you are not going to basically use the scoring, because I had you explain, I think in uh, week two, that the scoring is one, and then engagement and participation at this forum also adds onto it. So 
for those who are not able to follow up with this because of the network, how would you say will be fair enough to consider them for uh, be beyond the 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 use of uh, your marking uh, rating to to ensure that there is fairness and equity across board? That's my concern. Okay, so what we are using scoring for, I, I, I'm not sure I remember where I talked about um, um, scoring is what is going to be, or beyond scoring is what is going to be used. As a matter of fact, we understand the, um, um, the fact that everybody cannot be online at the same time, and then there is the network issue and all that. That's why we made the portal a safe place thing. So if you go through the models in your portal and then you take the um the assessment and all that, yeah, you are you you are free to graduate. You you're going to get your certificate and all that. So it has nothing to do with um participation. Is there's nothing beyond the only thing that has um um the only clause is the top scholar. The top scholars are those that beyond just the portal, they are also able to attend the session. And the reason being that um, we have so many people that, because it is self-paced thing and all of that, um, we can have 10, 20, 50 people get 100 at the same time. So 100 people cannot become top scholars because we are not looking for the first 100 people. So we have to look for a way, the best way to select the first um, 10, the first 15 persons and all of that. So that's why we have all of the attendance and every other thing um, to be able to take top scholars for. That has nothing to do with participation, with graduation, with getting all of the um, um, other things that, that will happen after this course or after the port, um, the sessions and all that. We're going to have study visit in some countries. Of course, everyone that graduates from the course are going to go for the study visit. So that, that's, that has nothing to do with uh, beyond scores and all that. So I hope I'm able to explain this clearly. I just hope so. Um, so the next person is Isa Bukuna Kohn. Please go ahead and ask. Ah. Okay, we have um so basically and open lashi the last two people. Please, Miriam, Miriam. Let's have just okay. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon for all the teams of Brez. I am from Mali Bamako. I want to ask a question about a certification. I have finished to yeah. I, I have finished to do all assessment since module one to module six. I want to know now how to do learn the certification. Yes, That's I've explained question. that before. Yes, I've explained that before. That um, for everyone uh, that gone through the modules, we're going to have the um certificate at the end of the um LIS, which is after module um week six. So at the end of week six, we're going to make the um certificate active in the portal so that everyone can go ahead and download their certificates. Okay, Ogun Lashi Olamide Olubinga. Please go ahead. So, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Please, I just want to ask a question concerning that uh, portal. In module four, I tried to look at the assessment. I saw 50 questions there. Is it 50 questions or is it a network that brought such issue up? Because after looking at, in, in fact, at times the video will not download. It will not, it will just be telling you, get connected to your, to your uh, network provider. You cannot see this uh, video. Then I have to go to the next course. It will rotate, it will revolve around Later, it said network problem. Then the next one, will, which will show, go back to the previous one, I will not be able to assess it. And that's why. Then that's why I now ask. When I got to the assessment part, it is showing me 50 questions. And uh, when I go through it, I see that it is like a repetition 
of uh, question one, question two, and so like that. So I don't know. Is it network problem or is it the 50 question that is at, uh, it is allocated to the module four? Then uh, okay, after so this, we want to know what is the next thing. Thank you very much. Okay. So for um, what you're experiencing with module four, it's not 50 questions. I think it's your network. You may have to, most times what we advise people to do is um, to hard refresh their browser so that um, you can clear catch and then cookies on your browser to be able to make it clear for um, you to play the video on um, your the browser. So most times you, if you're using a laptop, you just um, click Control Shift R and it will help you um, do a hard refresh. Or if you are using your phone, you can just go to your browser, the um, three dots at the top um, right corner is what you um, click and then just, you see clear catch or clear cookies and just click on it and you're able to clear all of the um, obstructions from your browser and all that. So most times it's um, network that is causing that, it's, the questions are not 50 questions. So for what will happen at the end of the this um, life interactive session, so we're going to have um, a technical phase and the technical phase is the study visit. So study visit will be to specific countries and um, would also reach out to the countries that where we have all of the study visit to co um, communicate that to all participants that are in that country so that they can attend the study visit. So um, we have um, the last person. So Bichuku, Mike, please unmute and ask. Okay, yeah, thank you so much. And um, it's been an impressive one. Okay, um, the question I, I want to ask is, um, you actually clearly stated that attendance here may not probably add to max, but at least for us to get in flow with what we've studied, and that is understood. And then the question here is clearly, do we have a position maybe after the course for us to deploy some of the things we've learned, because especially for module three and uh, five for data about, uh, there are some of them that we need to take beyond what we're just doing in the in the class. I know the essence of bridge is practicality. And some of us already have farms where we need to deploy such. I, I was able to send mail to one or two, okay, one actually, but incidentally, she's no more in that organization. And if we have such plan, uh, maybe we could always um, avail it to know the next step we know we'll move after now. Sorry if we've actually mentioned about it, but that is particularly my concern. And I have advice for my fellow students. Uh, some of the questions here were actually explained in the introductory or, or, or uh, onboarding stage. So I would prefer they go through it and then to save us time, especially some of us who are in different localities with time difference. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so that's actually the, the question on the, the practicals and all that is actually why we have um, the study visit and all that. And, and really, Brace cannot do everything, right? Um, we are um, limited as to how much we, we are able to do and all that. But then um, the essence is to be able to give um, a basis, is to be able to help people understand what's happening and all of that. If you get other resources, you get other means to continue the learning and all that, that's actually very important. And I will advise that anytime, any day. And beyond that, we also try to share resources and opportunities with our alumni. For example, once you graduate from the race course and all that, you have become an alumni. And uh, Mr. Goblin, you may have to drop your question on the chat box and I will read it. Sorry, I may not be able to call you anymore. So, um, for everyone that's have gone through the course and all that, they become the brace alumni. So we share opportunities, we share resources. Anytime we're able to get anything that has to do with um, what Brace is keen about, we share it with 
um, our alumni. And then we also try to ensure that they network amongst um, themselves. So thank you very much. Um, Mr. Gordon, if I see your question in the chat box, I will definitely read it out. So someone is saying that help us share these slides for study purposes. I've explained that before that we're not able to share the slides and the video content themselves, but then the additional reading materials who have shared those already. Um, someone said, I didn't attend module one, two, three. Can I get them or do I need to join another batch to be able to attend all the modules? They, they are in the port. Okay, I think I've explained this to this person. Can we go? Yes, I remember oh, we have talked about this. So, um, Okay. Um. Sorry, I just want to. Okay, someone said. Okay, this is not a question. This is a contribution. Okay. I don't think I'm seeing any new questions. So. Okay, so. You can. Go ahead and um, all right. So thank you so much, everyone. Let's quickly go back to our facilitators. But I'm sure I might, might have kept them waiting with all of our questions and our answers. Uh, but then it's necessary again if for the portal you say there is still someone that doesn't know how to navigate the portal, there is a video um in the portal that you can use to quickly learn how to navigate through and all that. And if at the end of our speaker's presentation, you still have, you still want me to open the portal and then um, go through it with you, I'm really willing to do that. We can do that together. So, um, um, let's go back to our speakers. Mr. Nemeka, are you on the call now? Or Mr. Demi? Whoever is on the call can just go first. Um, you can just unmute and let, let me check on the show. You can just unmute and let me know that you're on the call, and I definitely will just leave the floor to you. Okay, Mr. Ade, I, mean, I think I can see you. Are you? Um, is he? A good yeah, time I'm speak? on the call, but yeah, I'm just trying to settle in, like I told you earlier. So oh, just yes. give me a few minutes to go that yeah. Okay, okay. A few minutes. I will just give you a few minutes. I cannot see Mr. Nemeka on the call at all. I'm not sure. Please, Mr. Nemeka, if you're on the call, you can drop on the chat box, but I'm trying to check for you and I'm not seeing you anywhere here. And um Okay, maybe we should use this time to answer Mr. Godwin's question. Mr. Godwin, if you are still there, just unmute and I'm asking you to unmute and ask your question. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Okay, I thank you so you. much. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, your response to the first uh, question I asked, Actually, I'm in module two. I think that's why I've not got into that. Uh, I've not. I've not got into that insight that you mentioned. Uh, there's something I'm actually would like to use the certificate, which uh, by the grace of God I know I'm going to hand where yeah, uh, to to to. I want to use it for something across the country. So my question is: uh, this certificate. Is this certificate of participation or otherwise or something? That is recognized yeah, internationally. It's a certificate of participation. And um, if you want to use it to apply for something that's um, really big and important, right. you can probably write to us and we can accompany with a recommendation letter or something. Okay, that's great. Uh, hmm. Okay, it's a fellowship across and it has to do with climate change. So me having yes. this uh, first hand knowledge, I think is going to help me. Mm. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you so much, um, Mr. Godwin. So does anyone um have other questions? Let's quickly oh I'm let me share my 
screen again and then we'll go ahead and confirm. Okay. So um, what we wait for our speakers, Mr. Nika is now on the call at all, yes. And then Ms. Adeni is trying to um, settle in. While we wait, we'll just quickly unveil our top scholars for the week. And for the week, we have, um, we have, Okay, so for this week, we have our top scholars as, please, let's just um, give these guys a round of applause, like give some virtual claps in the, the comment session to appreciate them. Who knows, you might just be the next person um, to be a top scholar. We still have week five and week, and week four, week five and week six. So um, these people actually came top scholars because they were able to fulfill all of the conditions that um is needed to become a top scholar. So um we have the in no particular order we have Eric Karani from Kenya, we have Izuako Evangeline from Nigeria, we have Ajayi Oladi Kupo Idris from Nigeria, we have Gabriel Kalichi from Zambia, we have um Zebidaya Sichinga from Zambia too. We have um, A.B. Enoch from Nigeria. We have Muhammad Muhammadi from Egypt. Wow, this is the first Egypt um, in this batch. So um, we have Kazim Dauda Kola from Nigeria. A lot of Nigerians today. Um, Adiola Yusuf Olajide from Nigeria as well. We have George Ragui Kuria from Kenya. We have Juku Emeka Chikeze from Nigeria. Let's appreciate these people that came top scholars for week three. Let's um, give them some thumbs up and then some applause from the um, comment session. And um, just before we continue, maybe I should just let my colleague do the, um, the membership drive. So I want to ask if no signs on the call to take the membership drive so that we'll just take everything and then we'll go back to um, the um, speaker um, as the last two, um, last on our to-do list. So Nusa, are you on the call? Yes, patience, thank you so much. All right, thank you. So I'll share my screen again for NUSA to take the membership drive. All right, please, um, NUSA, you can go ahead if you can still hear me. Yes, perfectly, I can hear you. Thank you once again. And um, good evening, everyone on the call. My name is Nusa Abandu, Membership Officer at African Food Chain Makers. And before I start, I would like to know how many of us on the call are members already or are chain makers. So if you're a chain maker, please kindly indicate on the chat box that with the tag, I am a chain maker. And for potential chain makers, this is the right time for us to become a member of the AFC community. The AFC community is open to entrepreneurs across Africa. Presently, we have um, membership reach in over 43 African countries, and we're looking to expand that number. Thank you, Eunice, Kimani. Yes, I can see Lesa as well. Thank you for being a chain maker. Yes, so potential chain makers, please, I'm, I'm waiting for you to click on the link to join the community. But before that, I would like to also talk to, I would like to also talk to, um, our existing chain makers on how they can also benefit, continue to benefit from our programs. So at AFC, we love to help entrepreneurs scale their businesses by creating the right visibility for them. We 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 help entrepreneurs to strengthen their businesses and also to scale their businesses. 
We prepare their businesses to enter new African and global markets through our programs and offerings. We also uh, focus on helping our entrepreneurs scale through referral opportunities. We share referral opportunities to entrepreneurs. We recommend them for exclusive events, for speaking engagements, for exhibition opportunities. And in line with exhibition opportunities too, we also take our members' products to exhibition opportunities for ourselves, where we can exhibit our members' products under the umbrella of AFC. We have a community where entrepreneurs can we have a community where entrepreneurs can also engage with like minds and also other entrepreneurs to share challenges, share opportunities, and share business insights as well. And also foster the networking opportunities and networking capacity in the group in the membership group. Speaking of membership groups, we have a membership WhatsApp group, membership Telegram group, membership Facebook and LinkedIn community where entrepreneurs can reach out to the entrepreneurs they see. And we have a designated membership dashboard where entrepreneurs can also look for opportunities, connect with other entrepreneurs, and stay tuned to our updates where we drop on the membership dashboard. And also we enhance our members' visibility we promote our members through the social media engagement. We have the knowledge session as well, where entrepreneurs can gain from industry experts and also stay tuned and listen to our first Thursdays, share ideas, ask questions, get answers to their problems, to their challenges, to their shortcomings, and also leverage information from these industry experts. And we also have an access to a designated resource hub on the platform where entrepreneurs and potential entrepreneurs can get links to funding opportunities, to capacity building opportunities, to trainings and workshops, and also to data resources as well. So now I've spoken about the benefit of our community. Let me talk to you about how we can join our communities for potential members on the call. In patience, please, if you can share the screen. So basically, like I said, our community is open to entrepreneurs across Africa. But we just have three criteria which we feel our entrepreneurs should meet before becoming a bona fide member of our community. The first is for you to either own an agribusiness or you work in an agribusiness organization and you are fit to make decisions on behalf of the organization. Then the agribusiness where you work for or you own was being in existence for at least six months. And also you is advisable you have a social media presence or a website because we are keen on creating the visibility and spotlighting our entrepreneurs to the global stage and also to um, external audiences to help boost your views and other ways we can promote your visibility as, an, as, an, as a community. Then those are the short criteria necessary for us to become a member. So once you know that you fit this criteria or you pass the necessary criteria you're looking for, all you have to do is just to click on the membership link to join the community or alternatively you can log into our website www.afcog.org and navigate to the join the community icon on the top right top right corner of the navigation page then you and once what you notice on that page is that login icon and you join the community icon the login icon is for already existing members to log into their dashboard and also continue to use that utilize their dashboard features why for potential members, you click on the join the community icon. I see my colleague has dropped it on the chat, but thank you. So potential members, kindly click on the link to join the community. So once you do that, you'll be asked a few questions about your business comp your business information and your personal information. Personal information just requires your name, where you're, where, you're, where you're located, your country, your phone number, your email that can be updating with our newsletters and also some other information we give our members and your business name, your business company, your CAC documents and some other social media links as well. So once you've done this, you'll be temporarily able to access your dashboard temporarily because we have not verified you. So before you verify, you have to update your profile. Updating your profile is simple. You, you log into the dashboard, to the dashboard that you've created with the email you used to register and the password you created. Once you've done that, you navigate to the settings bar where you would be able to update all other information about your company and your profile. Once that is done, we will receive a confirmation email from our hand. Then we will verify. And upon verification, you as well will be 
you receive a confirmation email to tell you that your application will be successful. And once that is done, you'll be open to all our membership benefits. You'll be able to connect with other entrepreneurs, able to leverage our social media groups. you join them automatically. And most time, we also send the links to you as well via our newsletter, our email, and other medium which we use to connect our entrepreneurs. So basically, that is all we do with the membership community. We offer opportunities to our entrepreneurs, and we hope that we like to see new members on the going forward. And before I go, I also want to speak about the marketplace. We noticed that this is an opportunity for entrepreneurs to showcase their product to the external audience. So as a member I on this call, I've not started utilizing the marketplace feature. You are missing out because this is what tell the global stage about your business, about your product, what you are offering. So remember I said you need your social media handle. So this will help you create the visibility you want. Once you log into your dashboard and you navigate to the marketplace, you'll be able to upload your products. So you upload your products, you upload the product details, and you upload the link to where a, an external person or a potential buyer can get the product from you. So you'll be the one to interact with the member. What you are creating for you is just the visibility. You see it as the member shop where entrepreneurs are interested in getting your product can reach out to you. So alternatively, alternatively, you can put your WhatsApp link where on the buy item icon where entrepreneurs can directly reach out to you or you can put in your social media handles or your website where entrepreneurs can further engage with you as well. So that is what we do for the members marketplace. We urge everyone on this call who are members and are, who are not utilizing the marketplace feature should start using it so you can drive traffic to your page and you can drive the right customers that are interested in your products. Thank you, and I'm available for questions regarding dashboard or certain registration um, information. Thank you, and I will await your questions. Over to you, Patience. All right, thank you so much, Nosa. Thank you so, so much. Um, please, if you have questions regarding the membership, um, the AFC membership, or, or you need more clarification, this is the time to let us know. Um, now that the sex is available, you can um, answer your questions if you have any questions. And again, for those of you that might be requiring um, recommendation and all that in the nearest future, it is advisable that you join the um, membership platform because that's the best way you can get all of these things. If you join the membership platform, we can... Um, beyond just being a participant of a particular program, you are a part of the AFC family, you are a part of the AFC community, and that um, helps us um, be able to verify you and then get to know you better and all that. And then getting recommendation and other things from us becomes easier if you are a member. So I advise or I suggest, yeah, I suggest that... Um, you become a member to, so as to make things even easier. Lizzie, sorry, Lizzie, please go ahead. Lizzie, please, please go ahead and ask you. Hello, please. hello, everyone. Okay. Good afternoon. Good evening. And yes, you are. Go ahead. And thank you for yes. the opportunity. I'm Lizzie Bine from Nigerian Women and Rural Life Farmers Association. I've been following Brace for some time, but I don't really have the opportunity or time to do any course or complete it because uh, of my role too and the work I do. So, and uh, I want to find out, these courses run for how for how long? Is it weeks or months or days? So that if oh. I cannot, I may introduce the people or my colleagues to attend. Okay. So the um, race course, we have explained this before, this is the time for membership, but it's fine. So the race course actually runs for six weeks. After six weeks, we still had maybe like two to three more weeks for those that wants to probably practice or do other things um, in the portal and all that before the portal finally closes. And I have explained before that the main class is not really this life interactive session. The life interactive session is not our major class and all that. For those people that have um, clicked on the portal and then they have logged into the portal to check what's there, they would um, agree with me that the, the courses, they actually very sound and then we have 
um, lectures, videos, and all that going there. We have industry experts that came together to record all of those um, courses and then and then we decided to put them in videos and in modules and put them in the portal for everyone so it, it doesn't have to you really do not have to attend this um, life interactive session to graduate from the brace program once you can um, take the classes online you can log into the portal take all of those courses and take all of the assessments you are good to go. But then you the life interactive session is just a place where we you in the portal you don't have the opportunity to ask anybody questions because it's um pre-recorded and all that. But then when we come for this life interactive session, all of the things that you learned in the portal that you have questions about, you are able to answer them. And if you're not able to attend the life interactive session because of your network, that's why we used to record it and then we send the um the link to every participant so that if you're not able to attend the live session, you can listen to the recording at any time you um, are willing to do that. So please, um, carry go travels. I hope it's about membership. Please go ahead. Thank you. Um, I want to ask, I'm actually a member, okay? But that same um, updates, to update, to put your CAC and other required documents, I don't know where to navigate to to get to that point. Because I'm touching the update and um, you're just giving me something else. So I don't know if I can get assistance from any of you after the class, if it is possible. Yes, yes this is very possible. Can. Okay. Yes. Okay, Please so ahead, I, I, don't, I don't know if... Patients can permit me to just maybe do like a live 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 demo for a participant. But just to answer your question, yes, you can update your profile and you can find navigate your CAC documents on your dashboard. You just navigate to your settings and you do that. I I also see a question from Pamela. I updated update my profile, but yet to be accepted into the community. It's been months now. So maybe Pamela, you have to send an email to me or you message any of the admin i'm an admin of the base platform you can message me on the base platform and i'll follow up with you what i need is your email and some details you used to sign up so i can verify that and know how to attend to you mm -hmm. then i also see a question from i also see a question from patients magodo do you deal with food certifications so technically we don't do that directly, but we have a vast good relationship with organizations that does certification. We also try to bring industry experts to that are in these organizations to become maybe faculty, faculty team members, or maybe um, guest speakers for our programs, for our membership drive, for our membership um, programs, like our first Thursday. So we have selected topics that we can invite experts to come share knowledge in our, with our entrepreneurs. And certification can also be got into our programs. So we have a, a program on exporting. We have a program on some other, like we have the visit for climate change. We have a program on how we can in, expand the export space for entrepreneurs. So in those type of programs, we reach out to the right um, organization or institutions that can help with certifications. And we can recommend our entrepreneurs and engage them with the institutions that are into certifications. So we can do that for an you we can recommend because the recommendation is part of what we do at AFC. And for other related questions, I think I've addressed the first two. For Carigo Travels, if you can engage me after the call, I can show you how you can update your profile. Or let me see if I can share my screen here. So can you guys confirm that I can see my screen? Okay, yes, I can see your screen also. So as a member or a potential member, like I said, you would be directed to, when you click on the www.afc hub, you'll be directed to our landing page. This is our landing page. 
So one thing you can do is to, and for our members, yes, please, you can send in your pictures, your products if you want to be, your face to be featured on our landing page as well. So it will, we have more pictures and products. Then back to the question, you can see the login and join the community icon. So for a member, you click on login. For a potential member, you click on join the community. So let's assume I'm a member now and I want to click on the community, have my membership dashboard. You'll be asked to impute your login details, which inquires your email, which you used to sign up and the password you created when you signed up. So just click on login. So once you've logged into your dashboard, you'll be taken to your membership dashboard. You have resources, you have chats, you have your dashboard, you have favorites, you have the marketplace. Let me quickly talk about the marketplace. For the marketplace, what you just have to do is to upload your products. All you have to do is upload the products. So for a new person that wants to upload the products, you click on the add products, you can see on the top right, then you impute the product details you wish to impute. The product name, let's say for example, ginger spice. The currency, if you are in this basin dollars, you indicate this naira, indicate in Nigeria now we use naira, you can indicate maybe a, a bottle is let's say two five. Then the image of the of the spice you indicate you put it. I don't think I have an image for that, but I can use any of the image that is here. Then the company, the company is your email, your registered company. You automatically see it because it's on your dashboard. So let me use African food makers. Category is spice and drinks, beverage, depending on the kind of product you want to upload. So for a spice now, I'll click on spice. The tag might be a tag is just an identity, what you want to identify the brand with. Maybe Mm. For the sake of this demonstration, you can just put mm, sweet or spicy, whichever you want to use. Then the product link, product link is the link to your to your social media handle or your website or where where someone that is interested in your products can get what they are looking for and they can contact you. So for me, I can just put www.afc.org. Since I've made certain AFC. So you click on publish to publish the photo. That means you want it to show on the AFC site. The product description, just a few words about your products. So you can type a little thing about the spice or what you are, what you are showcasing. This is, you can just say this is, an original or locally sourced. This is this product is locally sourced. Or just type anything you feel like typing. Then you click on submit. Once you click on submit, you get a submitted a tick icon here that the product has been submitted. So you can close it and you see that the product appeared on your dashboard or your dashboard here. But this is not showing that it will reflect on the AFC hub. Is going to be get a notification from the admin end that this particular member has updated the product. So we have to review it from our end to know if what we imputed is correct in terms of the spelling or the link you provide the leave is going to. So once we've done that, we approve it from our end and it reflects on the AFC website marketplace. But back to the question that one of the participants asked. So you click on settings. And you can see different options for settings. You click on your profile. So under your profile, you see some, when you are registering as a member, when you sign up to be a member, you might not find all these questions asked. That I said, we upon when you register, you'll be taken to your temporary dashboard where you can complete some update before you verify it. So as a member, you can change any of this you want to change. I can change my first name to African Food Chain Makers. Can change the graphic you can change some other change some other details you want to change. Change some other details you want to change. You can change your company logo, you can do the different logo they want to put on your on your dashboard. 
Let me see if I can change to another logo for the sake of this demonstration. Let me try this for the sake of this demonstration. Then some other things you want to change your gender, or if someone that is registered without the gender, you can always go back to your dashboard to update it to the right gender in your country. You can change it. Depending on it's not that you change it for any for changes sake, just for us to get the accurate data, please. You change it, your Facebook, impute the right Facebook, impute the right LinkedIn link or Twitter or Instagram. So once you've done that, you can just click on updates. Once you click on updates, it will load and I think it's taking time to load, but it should it should load and you see the difference. So it has changed. You can see the update successful from your hand. This is for your user profile. This is for your user profile. You can update your company as well. So your company, you click on the company. Please, at any point, if you have questions, let me know. I can always interrupt and you can always interrupt me and I'll explain further. But so far, please let me know if everybody is clear. Then as a member, we notice that some members have more than one or two companies. So you can be a registered member with having two membership, two company details. We don't want multiple membership registration, but a member with two companies can register the two companies. All you have to do is just to update it on your company profile or your settings. So for example, if I want to change, if I want to edit my African food chain makers company, I will just click on edit. For some members, it's only one company you will see because it's only one company you registered with. So here I can change whatever details I want to change about my company. I can change my company name, I can change my position, I can change my email, I can change the country as a mother focus area, I can change the registration number, I can change the type, company type, number of staff, if you have an increased number of staff, maybe before you were 20, your, your 20, your organization, and you've increased to maybe 40 or 50, you can indicate in the, you can indicate if you're in the, if you're in the early stage and you've moved up to maturity or growth stage, you can indicate it. If your revenue range was has been changed, you can also include the revenue range. You can select if your company is registered or not. Then company address, you can update all these things. Company description is very necessary as well. You know, what you expect. So these are, these are social media links, company Instagram page. So you click on updates. Notice that you not see where to update up CAC documents here. So your complete details have been details have been updated. You see everything has changed. The go to the number of staff has changed. So this is what you do for your company. But for you to update your your, your CAC documents, you click on verification. So once you click on this verification, because that is part of what we use to verify our members. So you can see the option of registration documents, registration number. So is we request that you update, upload your CAC documents here. So you can choose a file. I don't have a CAC document, but I can just upload any file or picture of my CAC document. Let's assume my CAC documents. I can upload it. Then you verify. Verify documents we take. Okay, you have to fill the registration number of the CAC documents. Let's assume this is my verification number. So what you do is that when you click on this, we will also get an email from, so you get an email from you. Yes, you submitted your proof, you get an email. And once you get that information, we verify your business. Having said that, I believe I've been able to answer some of our questions to some extent, but for information's sake, I will, I would, I will do a quick summary. So, like I said, you log into your membership dashboard from the website, log into WWAFC and log into the membership dashboard. For potential members, you click on the join the community icon and fill the necessary details with from a member. For members, once you click on the join the once you click on your login, you log in with your email and the password you created. 
once that has been done, you'll be taken to your membership dashboard where you can navigate through the chat connections for you to engage with people that it's for you to engage with people in the chat. And this will show how many people you've engaged with live chat, how many entrepreneurs are online, and how many entrepreneurs you can engage. Also, another way of engaging a member is to go to the community page of the website and look for a member that you wish to engage. For example, now on this place, you will see view or entrepreneurs of the hub. This will take you to our community page on the hub where you can see the member you wish to engage with and chat the person on. So far, the person is also a member of the community. Then the resource hub is for you to get other resources, funding opportunities, data opportunities online, our podcast, our events. So you can get that on the resource hub. Favorites is just what you've done the most. What you frequently do is the favorites. You start them, you click it. The marketplace, like I said, is where you. The marketplace, like I said, is where you upload your markets or your products. Why the business showcase? Why the business showcase is a way. Like I said, we also create visibility for entrepreneurs. So if you wish to participate in our Instagram live in some interview sessions with our team on Instagram on some other platform. You can you can indicate interest here by you can get interest by clicking on this platform and add some details you wish to add. Once you've done that, we will get an information from our hand and we engage you via email. For settings, you can update your settings, your profile, your information, your company information through the settings page, and we will be able to reflect those changes and you verify your your membership status and also beneath and if you scroll down beneath the beneath the the dashboard below the dashboard you see the links to join the community we have the facebook facebook link we have the we, we have the linkedin and we have the whatsapp so those are the links you can use and telegram those are the links you can use to become members so just click on any of the link and you'll be directed to our membership community. And also we have the support system where you can engage, you can drop your message for us on the engagement and we respond to any inquiry you want or you have. Thank you. And I will await further questions from participants and over to you, patients. Sorry, I was speaking while muted. Sorry. So thank you so much, Nusa. Thank you so so much. So if you still have other questions, please you can send us um, an email or check with them via the platform. Surely, you to where you can get the um, correct answers. So. Um, is that the have you set it now so that we can turn on the button? Hello, Mr. Demi. Yeah, we can. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you very well. Yeah, we can. We can proceed. Uh, but it's just, uh, our time is actually far spent. And uh, I mean, like I explained earlier to you, I've not been able to get my lights on uh, i'll still do it to expand just directly from my notes so okay i'm um, sorry my... just before you continue um so would um have you do this for a short time so that um, the participants can ask their questions but one of the um, very important reasons for life interactive session is for participants to be able to ask questions from the facilitators and then get answers as well so uh, maybe your presentation um, since you are not even doing it from a slide or with this slide you can make it as short as possible so that those that have questions can ask before our time finally run out thank you so much sir yeah that's good that's actually that that's fine and I think we can work with that. And uh, okay, good afternoon, everyone on the call once again. And I would like to say uh, well done and good job. Congratulations to every participant thus far. How you have um, engaged on the journey of you know being a better version of yourself and you know enrolling for the AFC 
program. So, I mean, delving down into the topic of today, which is uh, risk and mitigation strategies for logistics and distribution. And like we all know, for everyone on the call today, I want to believe you understand that logistics is one key uh, element in uh, operations as, a, as an agri agro food business uh, person. Just a minute, please. Agro food. Hello, can you hear me? Agro food entrepreneur. So, and um, I would just like to give. I will give out just about five, uh, five um areas or five categories of risk that we need to be aware of uh, when we're planning our, our logistics and distribution. And I'm going to give uh, the mitigation strategies as well. So for each category, I will outline what the risks are or what the risk is to each category. Then I'm going to tell you what you should look out for and how you can uh, mitigate such risk. So one of it, I mean, which is uh, one of it, the one I would like to start with is what I call uh, supply chain disruption. Supply chain disruption, and every one of us with with our experience with COVID, this is a typical example of what disruption can can be caused and what uh, uh, supply chain can actually experience uh, a time. So, and competing in itself is actually the, you know, the coordination of, uh, of activities of moving uh, to, from K to B, which involves all of, the, all of the things you do with sourcing, procurement, warehousing, transportation, delivery in itself, and all of your inventory management, all of those set of activities is what we call supply chain. And the disruption that happened with COVID is that we saw that there was no movement. We could, we couldn't really move the way we we were moving as as or the way we know it as human beings. So we had to be under lockdown for a couple of months. Trucks drivers are not moving the way the um, the, the the way we expect them to move. Uh, ship ship uh from the from the ports are not moving as well the way we expect them to move because everyone. Is under um under under world world right now. Everyone is under some sort of restriction because of the pandemic, and we all needed to you know to rethink how we do things. So supply chain disruption is one that we need to look out for, and the risk with that is that we need to look out for natural disasters. We need to look out for. Uh, pandemics. We do not pray for pandemics to any sort of pandemic or epidemic thing to happen again. But however, in operations management and in operations planning, there's what we call scenario-based planning. So at any point in time, when we're planning our logistics or we're planning our distribution, we should always have it at the back of our mind to ask ourselves what a what-if question. What if something happens tomorrow? I mean, one supply chain disruption that we could have um, experienced in for those in Nigeria uh, in the past week uh, uh, the protest that uh, the uh, different parts of the tree. You know, that if protest is being held in major cities and roads, major are being blocked. I mean, that means that there's no movement for cargo and for people. So that's a, that's a typical supply chain disruption. We could look out for ge geopolitical tension, you know, issues around protests, around riot, you know, those are geopolitical tensions and it could happen from country to country. I uh, would like to use um, uh, the examples that happened within the Sahel, Sub-Saharan Africa, Niger, Mali, and uh, uh, Burkina Faso uh, recently. Those are geopolitical tensions and that have some sort of effects on supply chain and it could disrupt supply chain as well. And, uh, you know, that's one risk that is associated with supply chain disruption. And one, again, is delaying raw material, uh, raw material production. So this disruption can go as far as eating deep into uh, raw material production. For example, people who uh, or, or extract resources 
I'm outside for extra sources, for things like for things like uh, mining activities, either gold or lithium, or even agriculture. Let me bring it up um, for agriculture that we have. I mean, delay in raw material production. We at the farm, or we that we operate the farm, are the ones that are directly producing what we all need to consume, either as finished food product or semi-finished food product or finished product in itself that has to do with food because it comes directly from the farm. And the recent issues or the recent um, insecurity situation in Nigeria, up north, where we have large, the larger portion of uh, food being produced from is an example that I would like to use because at the end of the day, our uh, farmers are not able to get to the farm because of insecurity, banditry, and all of that. And that in itself has uh, some sort of delay and some sort of uh, 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 negative impact in food production. And we are actually suffering for that right now with uh, food insecurity and rise, uh, a daily rise increase in food costs. So the mitigation strategy for this would be one, to develop a diversified supplier base to reduce the reliance on just one single source. So going back to COVID experience, a lot of manufacturing companies, you know, all just have a reliable, just a reliable vendor to supply them a particular uh, resource or a particular item for their production. But, you know, immediately COVID struck, I mean, that relationship was impact was impacted negatively because this one single supplier are not able to meet your demand because they are not able to even move in the first place. So, but if you have had multiple vendors that you're dealing with that are supplying you your various sort of resources that, you, that are input into your production line, I mean, if one person is not able to meet your demand, you could reach out to two, three other people that you've already established some sort of vendor partnership relationships with. And those people would, one way somehow, I mean, you can't have all three or all five vendors all turn you down that they are not able to move because of this, because of that. We have come names that during COVID still, um, they were they, during COVID was when they made the biggest uh, ever growth they ever experienced in their, in their entire uh, uh, the years of running. So we need to look out for, you know, opportunities to diversify our supplier base and uh, reduce the reliance on just one single, one single source of, um, of, 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 of supplies when it comes to our raw material. Another would be implementing contingency plan and maintaining safety stock for critical items. So what that means is whenever we're planning we should always have at the back of our mind within our inventory management, we should always plan with a safety stock in view. Because I mean you're gonna have some sort of time, time that you place your order of new product to be supplied to you and time it takes supply to supply it into you. That's what we call the that's what we call the lead time. However, before that time actually elapses, because you need to plan with your data, your your demand planning data, your consumption pattern data, you need to make sure that at the time that your inventory level has hit your uh, what is it called reorder level, you should know that your reorder level is not just enough for you to sustain your sale. For that period, you should have both your reorder level and a safety stock that can cover up for you between that time when your vendor acknowledges your order, your ordering, and when the order actually eats your warehouse and you have your documentation in your inventory cycle. So we should always plan for safety stock for our critical um, items in our production. And the last for that, the last mitigation strategy for supply chain disruption would be we need to invest in real-time supply chain monitoring and analytical tools so that it can help us predict what is to come, it can help us predict our consumption pattern, our our replenishment pattern. And once we are having a live dashboard, you know, a technology tool, there are lots of technology tools right now that can help us, you know, that can help us do all of these things, all of this analytics. And once we're looking at it, we're able to make a more informed business decision on 
what to do part time so that whenever there is a supply chain disruption, we are not really impacted. So the next one uh, is what I what I call transportation delays, and you know transportation in itself is one of the key pillars of supply chain operations. It's one of the key uh, the pillars of supply chain operation, and without transportation, nothing moves. And even transportation in itself is is believed to be a tool for development. And a basic example for that is if you look at uh, real estate businesses, you know, a place that just, you know, beer lands and all of that and nothing is happening there. Immediately the government or some sort of company, you know, just summon up the courage to make a road, build a road infrastructure around the area. The next thing you see is that development just starts happening in the area. So wherever there is a transportation infrastructure, there is development. And whenever there is delays in transportation, there is a huge risk to our distribution and logistics operation. So transportation delays is the one major uh, the category that we need to look out for. And the risk that is associated with that is one, traffic congestion, two, port delays. For us in Nigeria, I mean, before now, I mean, things are getting better in our Nigerian ports these days. But before now, there's a lot of issues around Apapa congestion, the port congestion, you know, the, the Portacot the port, Harcourt port, the road, the access road to the port in Portacot is not accessible. It's not, it's not good. So it's bad. That's the reason why I see a whole lot of importers, when they import, they prefer to import to Lagos. And the Lagos port, Harcourt, which is you know increasing the cost of operations and all of that. But if we have all of our ports, you know, functional with uh, great metrics and efficiency, we wouldn't have that. So we should watch out for traffic congestion. We should watch out for port delays. I and mean, we should, I mean, one thing that is critical with transportation when we when transport operators are not efficient or effective when it comes to their fleet management exercises is breakdown. You know, you load a truck today that's moving your cargo from Lagos to Kano, and before you know it, the truck has just traveled from Lagos to Ibadan and it has broken down, and they do not have a rapid response to, you know, to come rescue the vehicle or give you another vehicle for transloading and all of that. So we need to watch out for such risk. Um, another risk that is associated with transport delays is weather conditions. I mean, if what Doing air cargo, but doing the freight, if we're doing road transportation, that's just some sort of way that weather actually affects the movement of these modes of transportation. For 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 air transportation, when the weather is not clear enough for for planes to fly, can't fly. I mean, when it's very when it's very snowy in the west, I mean, you see that the planes are not flying because of bad weather. And when there are heavy rain as well, when it becomes too easy as well, that sometimes you advise not to fly. So for cargo planes, the same uh, the same technique applies. For for ocean freight, I mean, when there is a whole lot of um, what's it called now, ocean tides, you know, sailors are careful at the time, and you know they know when to actually set sail and when to you know to slow down and just be at the dock. And same thing with road transportation. I mean, if there are if there's every rain on our roads and the roads are flooded, our vehicles can't move, you know, over time and all of that. So mitigation for all of this is, I mean, we need to have technology adoption. I mean, I made mention of technology earlier when it comes to, you know, uh, managing supply chain disruption. And it, it's the same for transportation delays. There are some technology that we call root um, routes optimization tool right now that can always help us, you know, plan the 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 the, the, the operation of our vehicles, also you know, and to let us know just like we all use Google Maps today. If you if you're living from point A to point B, you want to see how long it's going to take you, you know, to travel that distance, and if there is traffic on the way, so you can always, you know, ask Google to give you some sort of alternative route so that you are able to you know you know, make your trip in record time and not, you know, uh, spend so much time. So that's some sort of uh, route optimization software. 
you know, but we have other ones that does that does a whole lot of advanced uh, analytics and um, um, advisory and predictability in terms of you know uh, planning the movement of vehicles per time. And the second one I'd like to give, which is the last for us, is for us to develop. We need to develop relationships with multiple carriers. I mean, when, depending on the the way our operations are, you need to have different options of transport vendors that you can always reach out to whenever you need transport services. So that when someone is not giving you the best of service or they are not able to meet your demand for time, you have options that you can switch to. The, uh, the third one, because I'm actually going to give five categories. The third one is regulatory compliance. For those that are in the logistics and transportation industry, they know that this regulatory and regu regulatory compliance is actually very key because for kinds of um, uh, cargo that you move within a country or you are moving cross border wise, there are expected licenses and documentation that those cargo are expected to have before you are able to move them from point A to B. Locally in Nigeria, for example. If you're going to do um, exports of some sort of commodity, either a cash or sesame seed from Nigeria to a country, say, uh, to the Netherlands, you need to have some sort of local documentation that you have um, you have gotten from the regulatory bodies, majorly called Nigeria, no, Nigerian agencies, the government agencies. You have the food produce, uh, food produce authority, you need to obtain your certificate of, of certificate of origin. You need to obtain your uh, phytosanitary. You know all of these are regulatory documentation that you need for every every cargo. So we need to be aware of you know regulatory compliance and the risk associated with that is one non-compliance when we are not when we don't have the required documentation for all of for the cargo that we are moving or for the set of distribution that we're trying to do, then we are playing to the to the end of the law. Because um, um, once we flout the law and and and, and uh, what they call regulatory body, you know, a, a custom, whoever the person is, you, are, you, you need to, you know, face the, the wrath of the law and pay the necessary penalties and fine and all that. And you don't want to, 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 you don't want that to happen to you because it's going to it's going to increase your cost of operations. It's going to cost some negative impacts and uh, bad experience for you and your customer when you're doing uh, this set of uh, operational execution. And the next, you know, risk associated with regulatory compliance is changing regulations that can disrupt operation. Yes, I mean in in in, in Africa majorly right now. I mean our laws are are known to not have some sort of stability, especially with government regulations. You know, today you can wake up. To, I mean, today is some sort of rules applied to some sort of operations, and tomorrow, by the time, you know, you wake up, the government or some agencies are making new pronouncements that is going to, you know, affect your operations directly or indirectly. So that's the number two. And I would just like to give two mitigation strategies you know, to to back those 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 risks uh, uh up, you know. One is I mean we need to stay informed about our local and national and international relations regulations. Like I said earlier, you know, you need to be aware of all of the required documents or documentation and certifications. I mean I think somebody on the call was asking if um if AFC actually helps with food certification earlier. You know, that's one of that's a risk mitigation strategy for you to know all of the um, um, uh, bodies that you need to be uh, that you need to speak with or engage to have the required licenses for whatever you are producing uh, from the farm or from the factory, you know, however that is. So we need to, to be aware of all of those things, all of those documents. And then the second one will be we need to invest in compliance management software as well. And we need to train our employees. We need to train ourselves, train our employees on the impact of not complying, you know, to regulation, and we need to invest in our people through training, through through uh, through technology, you know that. And the the number fourth uh, 
category I would like to to to, to share here is um, inventory management issues. Inventory management issues, uh, like I said earlier, you need to know what your lead time is when you place your order to when the order is being fulfilled. You know, you need to know what your customer, what your consumption pattern is, what is the volume of sales that you make per day, per week, per month. So you are able to extrapolate that and plan or on a quarterly, on a monthly basis, uh, on a yearly basis for your projections and the things that you need to do. So um, for inventory in itself, for those that, for us that were in logistics and supply chain, you know, inventory is sometimes uh, known to be a good, known to be a good, um, uh, what's it called? Some sort of, we call it a good or a lesser evil, depending on the situation. Because when you are holding too much of inventory, I mean, it's so it, it's bad because if your sales drop, uh, that means you are tying money down. And when you hold not enough inventory, it's bad again because you don't be able to make sales when your sales finally skyrocket or when demand, you know, eventually just jump up. You'll not be able to meet your demand sales. So it's actually effective for us enough to have adequate planning so that we are not overstocking and we do not understand. So we are able to balance our inventory management. So the risk associated with it is overstocking or understocking of our inventory management issues. So the next risk to that is inaccurate inventory data. So because in our data and in, in our inventory management in itself, data management is actually very critical. Every day, and that's when you go to the supermarket, you go to the mall, and you see that when you pick up something from the from the shelf and you get to the point of payment. You know, they are, you know, doing, they are using the barcode scanner to scan the QR code or the, the, the barcodes on every item. So as those items are being sold, you know, there's a central inventory management system that is, you know, monitoring every depletion of every item. So, and when it gets to a particular number for every particular, for every commodity, there's a trigger for a reorder, that's what we call the reorder level. So if your reorder, depending on what you're selling and depending on how sales has been, your reorder level, your reorder level can just be 100. So immediately at every point in time that your inventory level for a particular item gets to 100, the technology or the system triggers a notification that you, to the vendor that supplies that product. And you yourself, you will get that notification so you're able to manage when or to, to engage the vendor to know when they are supplying and manage your lead time till that product is actually supplied. So when we have inaccurate data, that actually you know messes up our inventory planning because that means at some point we might not have overstock or understock as the case may be. So the mitigation strategy for that is one: we need to implement an adequate inventory management system with real-time visibility. Real-time visibility is something, a technology system that is helping us see the live actions, the live number every day, every minute. We can look at the dashboard and see that, yeah, the, the inventory for a particular item has depleted this so and so percentage day. Within the next four hours, we are going to be eating our reorder level. So who is responsible for you know, engaging the vendors. We are responsible for making sure that payment goes out to the vendor within a specific timeline and all of that. So those are some of the things that, you know, the technology will help us to do. Then in planning, we need to always, you know, plan adequately. We need to have, uh, 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 what's it called, a robust team to help with our planning so that we can forecast adequately on what is needed for time for our inventory, either to stock uh, more or to you know, stock less. So the last, the last point I would like to uh, to to highlight for us, which is the fifth one, would now be labor shortages. Labor shortages. Labor shortages. I mean, nobody. We all can admit to it. I mean, we are employers of labor here either directly or indirectly with our entrepreneurial engagement. So for some funny reasons, anytime we're not able to meet 
uh, customer's demand, there's some sort of uh, there's some sort of there's some sort of impact that comes directly or indirectly from labor. Either you know somebody that was supposed to do a, a particular set of activities well or never showed up at all, and and if they didn't show up for them, it's been done. If they did show up and they didn't do what is expected of them, then it might be a skill gap issue, lack of capacity, and all of that. So those are some of the things. That's uh, that's the, the the labor shortage category. You know, it it it's uh, multi dimensional, and the risk associated with that is actually you know shortage of shortage of liquefied labor. And when we say liquefied labor, just enough people. You know, to be able to to undo some sort of thing that we want them to do within our uh, operations or within our, our manufacturing uh, engagement, and this can lead to operational delays and increased uh, increased production costs as well. And mitigation strategy, I would just like to highlight too for layer to manage labor shortage category would be one. We need to immense workforce and develop programs that can attract you know, this, I know that a whole lot of organizations in Nigeria kind of struggle with it but if you go to the West you know one thing that is critical uh, you can get into an organization especially I'd like to use the, um, the Japanese example you can get into an organization in Japan and you can see your entire life within that organization and when you go to Japan you see people working in an organization for 40 years, 30 years they are not bothered about changing your job. So because once they come in, there's a structure that you know ensures that these people grow through the rank, that they do not feel discontented. They train them, invest in them, you know, take uh, uh take take uh take passion in the in their development as an employee because they are contributing some sort of value to the to the to the entire organization. So that's one key. Uh, mitigation strategy. But then another would be, you know, we need to we need to learn to to automate our processes. And when we talk about when we talk about technology, sometimes it's not just the computer technology. There's a whole lot of technology in manufacturing. There's a whole, I mean, vehicle vehicle production today is a whole lot of advanced manufacturing technology. So in farming as well, there is a lot of technology that we can adopt to automate things, processes. For our irrigation system now, I mean, there are a lot of uh, new technology for irrigation systems now, like the conventional one that we just dig a bowl on the farm. Uh, we have a pumping machine that just puts water through a pipe that somebody just moves around, sprays. You no, know, there are lots of ways. That, that can be done now, you know, a lot of technologies around farming, around making processes and our labor initiatives when it comes to labor shortages. So, and I think uh, with these few points of mind, I've been able to, to address some of the uh, concerns you might have had when it comes to the, uh, the topic of uh, risk and mitigation strategies for logistics and distribution. I think I'd like to welcome uh, questions at this time before we call it Sarah. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Jeremy. Thank you so, so much. Like you took your time to explain everything in details and that's really um, very interesting. Thank you so much. So we'll quickly go into questions and answers so that um, we can all go because we um, our time is fast paced, like we have three minutes ahead of today. So if you have a question, please raise your hand and I would um, ask you to unmute and ask your question, or you can just drop your question on the chat um, box and we'll take it from there. Please, if you have a question, raise your hand. If I count one to three and there's no answers, I'll conclude that you don't have a question and you understand everything. Okay, so I'm not seeing any hand raised yet. It means it's well understood. Okay, I'll also check the chat box to see. Oh, okay, yes, following such an interesting session. 
we need to invest so much in technology. Okay. I, I don't, I'm not seeing any fantastic presentation. Thank you. So we're saying thank you, um, Mr. DME. Um, thank you, sir. And give that good and accurate presentation. Thank you so much. So everyone is saying you did so well and it's so fantastic. It's cool and um, exciting. Thank you so, so much. So, um, yes. All right. I think there's no question from anyone. We look, we all understand this. And this is the first time we'll have a, a, a life interactive session that there's no question. Ah, Mr. Jerry, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So before we allow Mr. Demi goes, um, our normal tradition is to take um a photo shot with um our facilitator so that in case you meet him one of these days in one of these countries, just to be sure that and you are like, Oh, I know you from somewhere. He's trying to say, Oh no, you don't know me, just show him the picture. <laughs> So please let's um okay. on our videos so that we can take a photo with Mr. Dean before he leaves the call. Please um everyone let's put on our videos. Thank you so much, Esther. Thank you. Um Attack Zebi, Victoria Smith. A lot of people are putting on their videos. So thank you so much. So um Team members, please kindly help us take the screen um, shots of our videos. Thank you so much. So if you have not on your video, I'm giving you the time to please on your video so that we can take the shots. And um, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. So, Mr. Adiyem, your hands are raised. Do you want to ask us questions? Yeah. No, oh, no, sir. I would just like to say I would just like to say that, I mean, for everyone that might need uh, maybe some sort of engagement afterwards, you know, you can reach me on LinkedIn and just send a message from the from the BRICS program, EFT, and just let me know what, how I can be of help. I mean, I've been in supply chain for over a decade and I run a business uh, in logistics and supply chain as well, and we focus on international logistics. So can be of help to anyone and let's see how we can share knowledge together. All right, thank you so much. So um, everyone will share uh, Mr. DME's LinkedIn um, um, page so that you can engage with him. Thank you so much, Mr. DME. This is really, really great. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. So everyone, um, till we meet again for week five, yesterday's week four we five please if you have not completed week four or you've not even started at all please go ahead and start because we don't have so much time today next week we'll try to um log into the portal for those that are asking how to use the portal we'll try to log into the portal and show you how you can um navigate through the portal but if you have questions on the portal, you think next week is too far, please reach out to any of the admins in the WhatsApp group and we'll definitely show you how to go about it. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for attending the session today. Until we meet again next week, Friday, please endeavor to complete your um, assessment and then to complete the modules. If you take module five before the um, life interactive session, it will help you have questions to also help you understand what you have learned better. So thank you so much. Um, if there are no questions, bye everyone till next week. Bye, thank you, thank you.